My name is Yvonne Bogue. I'm an artist. I've always been an artist. From 10, I knew I would be an artist when 10 years old. It, it was this three-way thing, and I kept seeing all these similarities between how human beings try to communicate. With, with shape, with sound, with emotion, Color. But I make my own language not related to anyone else. Color is uh, emotion, shape is maybe word, sometimes people, sometimes not. Depending how I feel. Yvonne reacts to her environment. Wherever she is, she, she reacts to her environment. What I find interesting is the way that the different styles, the different things that she does come together. And she has her way as an artist. I would, I would say my work is not um, figurative, it's not realistic. It's, it's sometimes a bit narrative, but basically it's about making, trying to express certain ideas or feelings using shape and line and colour, things that are universal and that can go beyond individual languages or understanding. So that if somebody completely different culture can look and still see something. An artist who communicates through colors and shapes. Yvonne Bogue's journey in Korea begins here. It has been more than 20 years since Yvonne Bogue, an artist from Scotland, first came to Korea. Yvonne and her husband, a scientist, are taking a trip to the port city of Mokpo. When I first came, I stayed a long time on my own in the country, six months. In Korea, I feel more comfortable than in any other country, except Scotland. I don't understand. A very strange thing. And when we came to Mokpo, just lo loved the history from my childhood, from from living on a port, uh, you know, and shipbuilding, and manual work all the history and the hardship and the change. When I first went there, strong people fighting, uh, stubborn, not giving up, and reminded me of my own country, Glasgow, my own city. Yvonne was born in a small port town in Scotland. That is why she chose Mokpo as the destination of her trip. She visited Mokpo last summer, but she wants to go there again. What draws her to the city? This reminds me of when I first came to Korea in 1993. And I went to Seoul and I went around in Sedong and Jongno. And it's all like this little alleyways, people living on the street, writing on the wall, everything jumbled.
I think it's important, like this is simple one about maybe young man and young, young woman meeting and round the corner a simple picture of fish. It's, it's like walking around reading the story of the village. Yvonne likes to visit places that bear traces of people's lives. This is one of the reasons she likes Korea. Stories like those that are found in this small alley inspire her as an artist. I imagine in the little village, you have to pass each other so closely, like just one passage, one person. Everyone must know each other or look out the window and see and know what's happening. So there's this little village culture. The town was amazing. All the little alleyways. And it's like, it, it, it's very organic, like one house and then another, it grew. No plan, just grew. And then all these little, and little hidden things. Yvonne has always been interested in people's relationships and stories. These days, most of our artworks are about communication. Making many pictures, many drawings, before, in case change, so I can capture now, now in case it changes. And just to, to watch the people, how they, what they do each day, and listen, and see the smell and the, the weather. I think it would be amazing, amazing place. Many artists, I think, would enjoy coming here. Up until a few years ago, this place was a destitute fishing village. but it underwent a makeover in 2016, and thanks to many people who donated their skills, the lonely village was transformed into a charming neighborhood. Yvonne comes across a group of volunteers drawing murals. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? Yes. Painting flowers. Yeah, flower. Oriental flower. Mokpo flower? Yes. Art students? Y yeah, yeah. Ah. Can I make a painting yes. too? Yes. Toto. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Here? Oh, that's good. Wow. Yvonne joins the volunteers. These unexpected events are the reason she loves to travel to new places. A special opportunity to leave her marks in the fishing village. What will she draw? This is a picture. Background and this colour means harmony. And when I walk around here, the colour... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, when I walk down here, many colours, bright, happy colours. Yeah. But no, no drip. Huh? Yeah, this car, no dripping. The students draw plum blossoms, which are often seen in Korean traditional paintings. They use colors that complement the blue ocean. That's better. Wonderful. Two before, two black. Green,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白花,白
This is work is about me and Bob walking around village. And this, this color is the colors I get from the village, like uh, optimistic, happy. And this blue one is Bob. And the other one is me. And the edges are the roads and the streets. But I forgot Bob's face. <laughs> it's blank face, because he speaks too much. The next morning, Yvonne, who likes to sleep in, decides to visit an unusual place. With her husband, she heads to a morning auction market. And when I got there, it was so interesting. I forgot everything. I forgot the time, the cold. <laughs> People selling and buying fresh seafood here communicate in a language of their own. Look at those hand movements. Yvonne finds their form of communication quite interesting. He, he, I was trying to get, I couldn't see what was happening. And I saw the numbers on the hats and I saw this, this and I'm trying to push to see and I ask him what's happening and he can't understand me and then then he looks at me and push me back and then he writes why are you here <laughs> very funny but the, the the fishermen they wouldn't let me in but when they see I really want to see they made a space so I could see And I said, did you catch these fish? And they, they didn't speak in English very much. They said, yeah, we just caught t tonight and we brought now. They, their life is, is hard, but they're happy. You know? And I, I, they were happy to let me see what they do. I wasn't in the way. It was, it was very, I was allowed a little look into their life. It's a delightful moment to meet someone who perfectly understands you. That is probably the thrill of communication. Communicating with someone from a completely different background in a foreign country. This trip will undoubtedly leave its mark on Yvonne's art. Stories of people's lives come together to become a chapter in history. American novelist James Baldwin said, the great force of history comes from the fact that we carry it within us, are unconsciously controlled by it in many ways, and history is literally present in all that we do. It's true, history is within us.
That is why Yvonne always wants to learn about the history of the country she visits. Even in Mokpo, she seeks out places that bear traces of the past. This brickwork was built during the colonial period and was in operation for six decades before it was shut down in 1997. We came to Mokpo, we went to the brickyards and I found it just so fascinating because it reminded me of my childhood. And look, I can hear the noise from this. I can feel the heat, the noise, dust, people, the energy, and all the life of people here. So solid. I can hear. Look up there. I've got to touch it. And his hands shaking here. This is a during the Japanese occupation, this factory was probably operated under the pretext of Korea's modernization and industrialization. And then they shut the door. Is this end or beginning? That's the end point. And so then bricks cool down here. Look, time, this is time. See the dust, dust coming from all the time. Hundreds of bricks, thousands of bricks coming through here. Bricks are building up a career. Now finished, over. I love the brick since the first time I saw it. And it just reminds me so much of my own history and the history of many people from the 20th century, many working class people from around the world. Post-industrial, we are past that. Many people would look back now and think, what a horrible way to work, a horrible way to live but they would have made their own life there, their own culture, and it was how they survived. And they get up early every morning, no matter what weather, they do their work, they go home. That's life, a different life, but it, one that shouldn't be forgotten. Came here, and I couldn't believe this place because my history, my father is, was crane driver. So when I'm growing up, I grew up in an industrial environment. And he'd come to work and he'd come home every day, dirty, tired, you know, stories of things, accidents, stories, many stories, stories of everybody's life in this place. Because in, in here, so many stories, but so many lives. Maybe people meet here, marry, children, grow up, grow, die. It's incredible. It's, it's just amazing. And, it's... And, and when I saw the, the ruin, the wreck, the, the, the skeleton of a whole history, I, I was just amazed overwhelmed by the power. I think it was the brickworks that really struck her when she went down. When we lived in Melbourne in Victoria, we lived in Brunswick, and there was a, an old tip, a Brunswick tip, where they used to tip all the rubbish, but that used to be brickworks. That used to be where they got the clay for making Melbourne bricks. Then we moved to Sydney, and we moved down the road from another brickworks, an old brickworks. So Brickworks is part of her life, it's been in her life.
Yvonne always pays careful attention to what's happening around her. Her works mostly depict the environment surrounding her or the people living there. To her, art is the process of understanding other people's emotions and pains and helping them heal. broken, all the broken. There are no rules when it comes to artistic inspiration. She is solely driven by her intuition. When I look around, I feel this part. Sometimes no reason, just a feeling. And when I feel the standing out, then I draw. I don't ask why. I don't make intellectual decision, I make intuitive decision. And when I did this cat, the two blue pipes hanging just there and then nothing, I liked. I don't know why. That's standing out. But if I come tomorrow, maybe a different one, completely different. So it depends on day, time, mind, light. Through art, Yvonne tries to understand new things and embrace differences. By learning about Korea's painful history, she gets in touch with the people who lived in that era. But unless we know the language completely, we never really understand the other person. Because the culture is in the language. The language we have, the language we were born with, contains our culture. And I always curious. I wish I could know Korean culture by knowing the language really well. Oh, yeah. Traveling back in time is a fascinating experience. What year? Spring days. What year? Spring days, windy, calm. Ah, yeah. Ah, that's no. This place puts on display the works of Korean contemporary artists, such as Nam Nung Hagon, one of the six greatest contemporary artists. When I first came to Korea and learned about the non Western painting, it was an eye-opener to me. I learned many things that, about color being sim more symbolic, about the movement of the line and the simplicity and the, the accuracy. So seeing those works were, were very beautiful. I could see the way the artists were seeing. And some of them have the, some of them who were doing the real life type paintings where they were, I could understand their life more than if I went back and tried to speak because of what was happening different times. The, especially the ones that were just a natural scene, natural scene, living scenes, I really related to them. And I liked the expressions on the cows. It's like the people knew the cows personally. They were sort of, they, they had obviously lived with them and worked with them. The cows had their own character. Blurry, different. 
different, like fog. Yeah. Oh, clever. This one I like very much because balance, balance of structure, two people writing book, but also between two people, I feel uh, friendship, uh, humor, and communication. I can't read this, so I don't know, but I can feel they know each other well, and they talk together. And the, the small books here, and the gray here, and then the heavy here, everything is balance, perfect balance. So it tells me this moment is frozen. Yvonne Bogue is a Western painting artist who knows how to portray Korean culture and images using Korean techniques. Sometimes she uses ink wash paintings in her work. And my art, not only a visual response, like an animal or a person, it's an emotional response, which becomes a color or a shape. So I'm making my own language to describe what I see. I do the same thing, but different method, different way, but same spirit. What I find interesting is the way that the different styles, the different things that she does come together. I don't know how you take a, a three-dimensional space like this and convert it into a two-dimensional space like she has. I have no way, I don't know how she does that. I have my way of doing it as a scientist, and she has her way as an artist. But we're both trying to do the same thing. We're both trying to make sense of what's going on around us. For many Koreans, Mokpo stirs old feelings of sadness. Mokpo port was the fourth port to open in Joseon in the late 19th century. At the time, the Japanese used Mokpo to transport rice and other goods from Joseon. The opening of Mokpo port only fueled their trade and looting. The fate of a quiet fishing town located on the southern tip of the Korean peninsula was changed profoundly by tumultuous history. This has a sadness and nostalgia and variation, which is unusual for Western style. I'm up and down, very different for me. It's like some resonance that goes between human beings. I think it's a com common connection we all have. It's meant like it an intuition or a feeling or a sound that travels between people. Carrying traces of the colonial period, the street between Yudarsan Mountain and Mokpo Station is preserved as a historical record of the modern era. This is the first church in Mokpo. When Japan annexed Korea in 1910, one missionary engraved the Teguk pattern on the front door to protect the national spirit of Korea. A tall tree hid it from view. So, see, this Chinese... Why Chinese? Why not Korean? Because 
여자들이 들어가는 문은 한글로 기록이 돼 있어요. 아, 여기가 그 독립 만세 운동할 때 태극기를 등사했던 곳이에요. Or going underground and making their own flag. In, in a very small town in Korea, a very meaningful thing was happening. by just ordinary people. I would never know. History is not a dead past. It's alive in the present. History is an endless communication between the past and the present. To learn more about the history of Korea, Yvonne heads to the Mokpo Modern History Museum, where the Statue of Peace has been installed. I'm looking at this. The same blanket. So sad. What are the cotton balls for? Well, they were young girls. Fourteen, younger. I've known the story of comfort women for a long time. I think the statue is very evocative and a very important statue. It's very symbolic. And the fact that that statue was going to be in Japan and has been in other countries, it's important to remember that the most of the women were children. They weren't fully grown, they were young women, and their whole lives were damaged and destroyed. And they were part of the, the, the ruin of war, not just the military, but the women suffered and they were forgotten and treated badly. Very sorry. Countless Koreans were forced to work for the Japanese during the colonial period. This is a bomb shelter that was used during the Korean War. They must put dynamite up here and drop this small one. Each one made by one different, some person made this with their hand. So Korean people and Japanese. Oh look, J Japanese. Korea, Koreans working. Yeah. Oh. This is granite, so hard. And, and going in the tunnel for the um, hiding from the bombs and hiding the small ships. And just the history of the, the village was just amazing. As I say, Okinawa has shelters. communicating over time and space. For Yvonne, it's an opportunity to reflect on herself and communicate with herself. The colonial history of Korea reminds her of her home country of Scotland, which had to the fight schools, many wars. Amazing. Very recently, Japanese government so some people drop their original names, create Japanese last names, and change their first names. If they failed to do so, children would not have been allowed to go to school, and adults would have been denied all services of administrative agencies. Control. Big control. They're small.
wounds inflicted by others can stay raw for a long time, controlling your life and affecting your way of thinking. And sometimes, unexpected experiences that are beyond your control profoundly change your life. I, I always knew that, that Japanese occupation, but I didn't know Mokpo had such a big part of o occupation because of port and reclamation of land and control of school. I didn't know the detail. As an artist who is interested in communication and interpersonal relationships, Yvonne has found a way to better understand Koreans. I like that one. <laughs> After learning about Korea's tragic history, Yvonne takes a moment to become a part of history and pray for peace. What did I expect from Mokpo? And I didn't expect to see Sewo, Sewo. And that gave me very strong feeling. When I first see that shape, my heart, I feel the words in my head come, the ship that swallowed the children. Yes, I've seen Yvonne's photos when she came here before. Yeah, and she was really affected by it. I don't think Yvonne's work can ever do justice or do anything to show the sadness of it. I mean, it's just, the boat doesn't, to me, doesn't look like a real boat anymore. It looks like a model boat, a full-size model. And yet it was a real ship. There were people on it. And now they've gone. That whole group of kids is gone. It's just awful. The sinking of the Sewaro ferry in Korea occurred in the spring of 2014 in the sea off Jindu, not far from Mokpo. More than 300 passengers lost their lives. Most of them were young students. I, I think inside there, they're still screaming. Their fear still there. I feel them, I hear them there. It makes my body <sighs> upset. <sighs> they're sad and lost inside. It's the fault of us adult people. We should have looked after them better. their children. It has been four years since the tragedy, but the myriad of yellow ribbons hanging at Mokpo Newport continue to cross the realms of life and death. There are no words to describe what it's like to lose a child. And no words to comfort the souls of hundreds of children whose journey had to come to an end at such a young age.
So always remember the children in our hearts from Australia, Sydney. <laughs> Many people in Korea are still mourning the deaths of the victims of the tragedy. Yvonne and her husband meet an artist painting something on the street. So you're making one long book of this, everything happening here. Is this book like Korean style, long, when you make a long panorama, not Western style? page, 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 but stretch out, so have a long panel. Ah, ah, so like this long, so history of change. It's very interesting. 제가 지금 현재 이 세월호가 목포로 온 이후 제 계속 세월호에 관련된 또는 음이 활동들을 제가 이렇게 역사적 기록화를 지금 하고 있습니다. This this style of page long I like very much better than western changing over because you can see whole in one piece you can see from beginning to end. 제가 이 세월호 관련돼서 기록화를 하고 있는데 지금 이게 지금 네권네권 차예요. 그래서 이게 아주 길어지죠. This is number three book. Can it's possible I can see other books because I'm artist. I'm very curious to see development and changing of your work. Two artists with similar philosophies. they decide to share their worlds of art with each other. Artist Chong Taeguan runs a cafe, which is also his workshop in downtown Mokpo. He shows his drawings of the Sewaro ferry tragedy. Sewaro를 그렸던 책입니다. 2017년 3월 30일에 진도 동고차에서 에, 목포 신항으로 온다는 소식을 듣고 유가족들이 새벽 6시 반에 도착했던 장면인데 당시 당시에 경찰들이 이렇게 좀 음, 그래서 저희들이 텐트를 치고 있고요. 그러면서 시민들이 자원방송 활동을 직접 이렇게 하는 장면들을 그려놓았어요. 그래서 저희들이 세월호 신해안 거치에 따른 기자회견을 하고 이거는 목포에 그 들어오는 입구라든가 길거리에 전봇대에다가 시민들이 5천 원씩 모금함을 내서 자기 글귀를 새겨가지고 저희들이 지금 다 달아주고 있는 거예요. 네. <웃음> I have some in my bag. I'll show you just very quickly. You see I like 한지. 한지 paper, yeah. 한지 paper. So I did some big ones and some small ones. But I, I wanted to make 
the ship and the people relating together. Sometimes anger, sometimes sadness, sometimes happiness, if all things are motivation. But I, I don't usually like to dwell on, on other people's suffering. I don't want to be using their suffering in my work. Not right. But this time I was so angry. When I saw you drawing at the ferry, it, I, I remember, you know, I make the same, same drawings from ferry, but very different style but using same yeah. Korean paper, Korean paint, but more Western gesture, mm. more loose, more heavy. Do you think it's possible together we could make one work? I don't think there's a problem. Because I've done Hanji before, I've done Hanji and I've done Hanji before. So I've done Hanji and I've done Hanji before. I think I've done Hanji and I've done Hanji. 그 좋은 작품이 좀 나올 것 같습니다. 네. Two artists who value interpersonal communication and sharing. What kind of work will they create together? The majority of people cannot understand things they have never experienced before. It is difficult to understand how one shocking event can change the whole life of an individual. But artists are different. Their works can help heal scars. Two artists paint together on white canvas using different techniques. They wrap up their collaboration, silently making a promise to never forget.
this black shape is the barrier between the living and the dead in the ship. They can't cross. And this shape here, this one, is a shape of pain. Shape of pain. And the three women try to comfort each other, but can't look this way, they can't look. And the women comfort each other, but the man, he's alone in his feelings. This man, orange. Seoro가 처음으로 육지에 이제 도착한 거지 신해양인데 목포인데 그때 당시에 유가족들이나 미수습자 가족들이 세월호를 바다에 있던 세월호를 처음 보고 이렇게 올라오는 육지로 올라오는 풍경 보고 있는 모습입니다 지금 저희가 보는 그림이 한국의 그 그렸던 작품하고 좀 다른 느낌을 느꼈어요 굉장히 고, 고통이라든가. 또는 엄마의 입장에서 보는 시각으로 이걸 사회적의 여건으로 보고 그리신 것 같아서 참 감명이 깊었습니다. When we met the artist at the ferry this morning, you could see that Yvonne and and his style of working were very different. He's very uh, um, controlled in his in his brush strokes. Yvonne is very much more emotional and uh, let things fly. And as the collaboration progressed, she started becoming more controlled and he started becoming a little bit less controlled. So it was almost like they learned off each other, which I found really interesting to see. You know, they were working separately on, on different areas of the painting, but they were still communicating, you know, by, by just swapping technique in some ways. And I thought that was really interesting. I'm very happy she's doing the work. I mean, I think it's really great to see her doing it. And uh, the, the smell, the time, the light, the shapes, the people, I'll never forget that. I don't know, I felt I, I, felt I was one of them. I was there, I was one of those people. Where I went to Seawall, like I'm looking at something, history. When I'm looking at the brick work, brick place, history. I was there at that time, I was part of that place. So that overall, I'll never forget, I, I'll go back and do more drawings.